Mr. Harris here and welcome to our first video of chapter 4. In this video I'm going to talk about cells which is chapter 4.1. I'll be posting this PowerPoint onto Google Classroom and eClass. So let's begin. Now let's look at diagram over here. What type of living thing do you see over here? What's the name of this living thing? Yes, it is a peacock. But if you look carefully, you know that you'll notice that it isn't actually a real peacock. It is made up of toy bricks. It is made of something like you can think of Legos. So it is made up of toy bricks. How about in reality? What if it's a real peacock? What what are real peacocks made up of? What's the basic unit of peacocks? What's the basic unit of a cute puppy or us humans? So the answer for this question is what we're going to talk about in the video today, which is cells. Okay. So living things, they comprise of cells as the basic unit. So let's look at some examples. So in chapter three, you learned about amoeba. Amoeba is only made of one single cell. Okay. We call it a unicellular organism. Unicellular meaning only one cell. Another example of a unicellular organism is bacterium. So we also learned this in chapter 3. Okay. So of course, there are examples of more than one cell. We call them multicellular organisms. And one very common example is us humans. So we have adults, we have there are more than 37 trillion cells. Whoa, that's a huge number. So just above this part, the basic units of living things are cells. Okay. So you may ask me, Mr. Harris, what proof do you have that you, living things are made up of cells, basically? So how do we know cells indeed exist? So this is where the microscope comes in. So microscope, what is a microscope? It helps to produce magnified images or objects. So another word that I use that I that I like to use is it helps us to zoom in on images or helps us to basically enlarge the image that we that we want to focus on. Okay? So just a bit of history about microscopes. There was this scientist by the name of, let me try and pronounce his name, Liu Wen Hoke. So he was the first one that invented a microscope back in the 17th century. Okay. So his microscope was able to make an object larger by around 200 times. So, of course, nowadays the uh, microscopes are able to enlarge by thousands or millions of times. But back then, this was a really big thing. So let's come back and let's talk about some modern examples of microscopes. So a light microscope is what you would commonly find in a school lab. Okay, so we actually have this microscope in our school lab. So hopefully when school resumes, we'll be able to uh, uh, use the microscope. So the advantage, advantage of this microscope is that the image that you see is colored. Okay, so let's look at it over here, the white blood cell. It is magnified by 700, 700 times. But to be honest, this image over here um, is not the real image of a white blood cell because they've added color into it. It is not the real color of a white blood cell. But hopefully um, in, in when we're in class, back in the classroom, I'll be able to show you some more images. And another thing about... The second thing about I want to talk about light microscope is that it has a low magnification. So it's not able to magnify by a large number. Okay. So another common type of microscope we have is an electron microscope. This is usually found in big labs and big factories. So the thing about this is the image as you can see over here is black white okay image is black 
and white. However, however, if you look at magnification, it is in this picture over here, it is times by 4,000 times. So it means it has a high magnification. So an electron microscope has a high magnification. So this is, of course, when compared to the light microscope, the electron microscope is also more expensive. And you can see in the picture over here, it has a lot of machineries and it's connected to a lot of computers. So let's learn about more about the light microscope. I'll be posting some videos on how we could use a light microscope and to in introduce some parts, but I'll also like to talk a bit about it over here. So we have an arm and the base. So this is usually for support. And this is how you hold a light microscope, one hand on the arm and the other on the base. For a light microscope, you have an eyepiece on the top. This is where you put your eye and you look down. Okay, and you have the objective over here. So the objective is to help look at the object, look at the object. Okay, so this goes in pair with the eyepiece. Okay, I'll talk about more about these two later on. Also, you have a diaphragm. This is pron pronounced as diaphragm. The diaphragm helps us to adjust the amount of light passing through the microscope. You have the mirror over here helps to reflect light onto the object. The object would be basically placed over here where my orange pen is. And then you would clip the object. The clip is for um, clipping the object over there. Okay. Apart from the previous slide over here, you have two adjustment knobs. Adjustment knobs are able to help us focus on the object. So basically, you can think about like your camera. So when you take a picture, you would sometimes tap on the middle so that it helps focus on the picture that you want to take. So the course of that adjustment knob and the fine adjustment knob helps us do the same thing. And then you have a stage where you place the object. Actually, you would place the object on a slide. Okay, this is where the slide goes. And then you have the arm and the base. Now let's talk about the eyepiece. So the eyepiece was this one over here on the top. So the eyepiece, they come in different um, lengths and uh, powers. So the longer the eyepiece, the lower the magnification. Okay, so for example, over here, you have five times magnification and it's the longest, whereas the 15 times magnification over here is the shortest. But for objectives, it's a different story. It's the opposite. The longer the objective, this time it is higher the magnification. Okay, so let's look at the shortest objective over here, which is this one. So the magnification power for this is four. Let's look at the longest objective, which is this one. And then you can see, you can read it over here that the power of magnification over here is 40. Okay, so it's a bit opposite, so please don't confuse these two. So remember I told you that I'll, the eyepiece and the objective are in pairs. So in order for us to know about the total magnification, there is an equation that we need to know. The equation is total magnification is equal to the magnification of an eyepiece times the magnification of the objective. So for example, let's look at an example. So for example, if I am using an eyepiece with this eyepiece in the middle, it has a magnification of 10 times. 
So let me go ahead and write that down. The magnification of the eyepiece is 10. Let me use a different color. Let me use this one. So let me go to the objective and then I plan to use an objective, the highest one. This one has a magnification power of 40. So let me go ahead and write that down, 40. So the total magnification would be 10 times 40, which is 400. So the total magnification of a microscope that I've used with 10 times eyepiece and the magnification of 40 times of the objective would be 400, okay? So you'll, for example, I'll give you some questions about this and then you will need to implement this formula, this equation. So let's look at this diagram over here. So this was the slide that I was talking about. This is a slide. This is where you place this on the stage. Let me go back over here. This is the stage over here and this is where you'll put the slide. So on top of the slide, on top of slide is where you would put the object, okay? So now just exam just imagine you have a microscope and you're looking at the image over here. So my question now is how would you see the image through the microscope? Again, I'll post a video about this, how you could see it. Hopefully when school resumes, we will be able to do this as well. But the image that you will see is something like this. First of all, the image is magnified, so it's larger, it's zoomed in. And secondly, if you notice that the image is upside down now, the letter F is upside down. So a word that we use is inverted. So the image formed in the microscope is magnified and it is inverted. Okay, so just to give a quick summary of what we've learned in this video. Cells, they are the basic unit of life. Okay, and microscopes, we've come across two types of microscope. So one is the light microscope, which is commonly found in the school lab. Another one is the electron microscope. So the light microscope, the image is colored. Whereas for the electron microscope, the image is black and white. And for the light microscope, it has a low magnification. And how about for the electron microscope? Yes, it has a high magnification. Finally, we talked about the microscope image. The image that you see through the microscope is magnified and inverted. Okay, so this is just a quick summary of this video, chapter 4.1. Please uh, refer to this video and do your upcoming assignments. Okay, I'll continue posting this series of videos. So continue watching them and subscribe to the channel. So next time when I post a video, you would immediately be able to see it on your YouTube um, account. Okay, see you in the next video. Goodbye.